Okay. Avionics are going in. <laughs> I'm Trent Palmer. I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. Now, a couple of the, the cool things. So this EMU, which I'll take off that. This EMU by Stock Flight Systems is designed specifically for the Rotax IS, the fuel injected motors. Cool thing about this is it actually references both lanes of the, the ECUs. Basically, there's two separate engine control units on this uh, motor. The 915 as well as the 912 IS run two complete redundant systems, both power and fuel delivery wise. And the Stock Flight Systems EMU is able to monitor both sides. So if you were to get a fault in any issue, basically like a check engine light on your car, it's gonna pop up on there. The cool thing about this one is it's gonna tell you not only what the fault is, but which lane it's coming from. You can go over here, try cycling the lane, still doesn't fix it, then you know, okay, I should probably get down and land. You know, the, the Garmin can do all your engine monitoring and it will tell you when there's a fault, but it's not quite as detailed as the way that the, the Stock Flight Systems EMU does. It just doesn't tell you nearly as much information. So that thing's a little bit superior when it comes to the monitoring of the IS motors by Rotax. The other thing it does, it runs the single lever constant speed prop. So as you'll see, I only have one hole here for a throttle. There's no prop lever. That's because it's all electrically controlled into a hydraulic governor. So basically this box will take in all the information, including GPS and the atmosphere and all that. It's gonna take all the information of where you're at in the flight and set the prop where you would wanna set it if you were like superhuman smart anyway. So That's in fine. theory, it should be running either at peak efficiency or peak power. It's always gonna be putting the prop for you in the best spot, single lever, very low complexity, pretty sick. Along with the G3X suite, we ran the remote mount radio, which is back there. That's also the whole audio panel. So it's got stereo intercom for both sides. We are running an auxiliary music input that's going to come from this little JL audio Bluetooth receiver thing. Uh, we got remote transponder, which is ADSB in and out. Got a new ELT mounted back there. Uh, it's a 4061. Battery is hidden back in that corner um, for weight and balance. Put a new transponder antenna underneath. All right, Nick, what are you working on? So the vertical power uses signal wires instead of passing the power through the switch. So basically, all I have to do is hook the switch up to a ground and then into a bus on the vertical power here, and that's what we can program to turn on whatever we want in the vertical power. Yeah, and for people that don't know, this vertical power thing is actually pretty sweet because it's smart in the, in the way that it interacts with the, the G3X and, and all of its components. There's features like um, the, the landing lights. We aren't running a wigwag feature even though Aero LEDs has that built into their lights. We're running it through the vertical power and with the integration of the G3X, we're able to set things like under a certain speed, the landing lights will go solid on because it knows you're either taking off or landing at that slow of a speed. Anything above that, it just goes to wigwag for recognition, all automatic. So you just say landing lights on, they'll be full on when you're taking off or landing. When you're in the air and you're flying and it knows you're not, you know, actually on approach or taking off, it'll go to flashy for better recognition. What else? Oh, geez, everything. There's, uh, today we got done all the distribution for the landing lights because we have two extra landing lights now. Two aren't on, but you're going to put those in later, right, Trent? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I just have to wire up the rest of the stuff into the screen. Everything in the back of the aircraft is done. Uh, Judd. Got all the hit connectors white, uh, that control the engine stuff all wired up, fuel pumps wired, everything there. So that was super, super helpful. And uh, we should be hopefully powering it up here in an hour or two. That would be sick. I hope so. 
Really quick, uh, glare shields are right here. Those are gonna get fitted after we finish the, well, actually after everything, we need to have the boot cowl on, then the new windshield gets fitted. Then once all that's put in place, then we go in and do the glare shield. We had made a carbon one, but after thinking about it, we have two GPS antennas underneath where the glare shield's gonna go, and carbon does kind of interfere or screw with or block GPS. So we made a fiberglass one. It is an epoxy fiberglass, it's about the same weight, and since it's not structural, probably go with the fiberglass one. Here's the boot cowl, we got the NACA ducts just for intake, you know, little vents. Here's the lower cowling. We've got the big NACA duct that feeds the radiator and oil cooler, a little cut out because the, there's a little uh, valve on the bottom of the, of the turbo, little a drain valve thing that goes there so we'll make a little bubble to cover that there's gonna be an air box over here fed by another naca that's gonna go right into the turbo then obviously up through the intercooler and into the intake manifold then the upper cowl is over here this one's still being done with all the body work there'll be some uh naca ducts on the top of this that feed the intercooler so that's the plan as of now that's the big hold up at the time that we're weren't wondering will the cowlings be done by high sierra because it sounds like Nick's been killing it so well. We're hoping to power up these avionics tonight. We've programmed the whole vertical power here. We've set up everything. So we have everything named and out to its correct pins. So now we're gonna go ahead and try the landing lights here. Okay. Oh, look at that. Gee, the right. other one's working. Cool, let's go ahead and do strobes. Now let me get out here. Oh yeah. All right. Then, Hold on, let me check the tail. Yeah. And we'll be back to check the nav. Oh, tail strobe's working. Okay, here come the nav. So is the other strobe, yep. And navs. Nav is on. And the strobes are off, nav's working, right? Oh yeah. Brandon. Like you knew what you were doing. I barely. <laughs> All right, so we have now got the, the final NACAs set in place on the upper cowling. That's for the intercooler intake. The actual air intake's right here. Got that one finished. As soon as that's done bonding, we can pull it off, start cutting the holes, then get the body work done in hopes of getting this thing into paint tomorrow. We need it to get into paint tomorrow for us to have any last little ditch effort of really making the High Sierra fly in on time, which we're still going for. We did power up the avionics. So far, everything is working. Nick actually knows what he's doing, I guess. It's finished. We've done it. First time we've seen the light of day with this thing. It's time for first start. Thank you. I hope it runs and flies. 
Oh man. What do you think? I don't know what I think. Uh, I don't know. I don't think anymore. Uh, it's been a lot. I think Nick and I have been working on this, what, 12 to 15 hours a day for the last, it's been 11 or 12 days. Or more. So each of us, if it was 10 days and we put 15 hours or, wait, we were minimum 15 hours. Yeah, minimum. We were doing like 18 hour days. Yeah, eight, 15 to 18. Cause we come in at like 9 AM, leave at midnight every night. That's 15 hours times 10 days would be 150 hours each, but we did more than that and more hours. Probably safe to say 400 to 600 hours. Including what these guys put in? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I think it's great. <laughs> I think Actually, we... it's, it's, it's uh, <clears throat> we've accomplished something pretty big here. Cause it's, it's hard to get that much done in such a short a period of time and make it. And that's what we do. But you guys have been humping. You and Nick have been working really hard at making this happen. And of course, Judd and Brandon and everybody else here has made it happen as well. So it's yeah. good. All right, you're gonna have to talk me through everything. I think I know. I'm gonna go master. There's one kicker on the on the 915 and the 912 IS engine starts when they're a cold start for the first time. It's gotta be a 51%. It's about a 51% throttle, which is unnerving on an engine start. Yeah. So you and do you have to instantly pull it back, back or does it not go down? instantly? But you it will not automatically go to idle, but you need to bring it back. All right, here we go. go ahead. Okay, a little more throttle. Trent. Uh, the brakes aren't strong enough to hold it. <laughs> okay, we ended up having a little leak on the heater on the inside. The one thing we didn't replace from the firewall forward or back or from the seats forward was the one thing that leaked. So we went in, cleaned up those fittings a little bit, had a little sealant. Hopefully that uh, will be fixed. We're letting it sit, but check out the cowlings. Light? Oh yeah, it's super light. It's just a vinyl carbon sticker. <laughs> yeah, right. That is not the truth. <laughs> a lot of carbon fiber labor went into that. <laughs> Damn. Damn. All right, it is time to weigh this beast and see what it comes in at. We got to get the cowlings on it, and we're going to push it onto the scales. Anxious to see what it weighs. You know, it was 856 before this. The engine itself was what, 60, 70 pounds heavier, John? 70, I think, was what we found out. 70 pounds. So. I'm betting it's going to be 9.35. What do you think? Low nines, nine, hopefully. Nine, give me a guess. Uh, let's say 9.10. Nine, 10. Nine, ten. You say you want to be a star. But the city is so dense so and loaded. You need to cover up your scars. Oh, level? Two, two. Zero. Sixty-three. Right That's right on the money. Right That's what it was last time. That's perfect. Forty. It's a good motor. Four thirty. Only ten pounds every one. That's good. So what's all of it? This thing adds round two. Thirty-two. Nine thirty-two. All right, just weighed it. We had all taken bets. I was the closest, but I was over, so I guess they're not counting it, but. Uh, it's 932, so a little less than I expected, which is actually good. Still a lot more weight than it was, but all the power, I'll take it. And come back home, I'll make some sweets and tea, just like it used to be. So, John is loaded in the plane. He's going to do the test flight, reason being, I've never flown, well I've flown that motor once, you guys saw for like five minutes. He knows what he's looking for, he knows how to handle it, so he's gonna go up and do the first flight. Um, then I think Judd's probably gonna take it for another first flight just to see what he, he notices anything different. Then we need to go in and put some heat shielding on the cowlings, we don't want that hot engine to start boiling off the paint or anything, because that engine puts out a lot of heat. And it makes you feel so distant, with such a disguise. Why don't you leave it all behind and come back home? I'll make some sweets and tea, just like it used to be. So you had to take the chance. 
wigwag work. Even though you got a rest. Oh, that thing sounds so good. Any gestures or favors from anyone, baby? Why don't you leave it all behind and come back home? I'll make some sweets and tea, just like it used to be. Oh, ho, ho. kind of nervous. <laughs> Why are you nervous? Excited, but nervous. Trent's first time flying in the Freedom Fox with a new power plant. Tell me that cowling doesn't look better than anything you've ever seen. It's ridiculous. Like, pushed it and like, yeah. <laughs> and it the I it stalled at 33. I don't know what at full flaps with a little bit of power. It's the and yeah, I was full flaps. What if you only did the quarter? All right, we are all wrapped up for tonight. We ran out of daylight, so I got to do a quick test flight. Thing is amazing. Tomorrow. We uh, button up the cowlings. We, we pulled everything off to put a little heat shield in there. Checked for oil leaks, got everything uh, squared away. Tomorrow I start my five hour fly off and then uh, hi Sierra. All right, morning of Friday, we flew Nick's plane over from the other hangar. Uh, we actually went and fueled up, so we filled him to the brim. The plan is siphon some out to put in my plane because it's empty. And then I need to go ahead and get my phase one fly off done, I think. We got about one hour yesterday, so I got four more hours today, and then off to High Sierra. All right, so I'm finally done with my five hours phase one fly off. We are heading to High Sierra, but I'm gonna wrap up the build series here. You guys have to tune in for the next video to actually see High Sierra. Anyway, guys, you know the drill. Like this video if you do, subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman, see you on the next one. Peace. You say you wanna be a star. Uh -huh. But the city is so dense and loaded You need to cover up your scars And it makes you feel so distant